Hey guys, it's Kelly and I am so excited to bring you my 2021 Volkswagen Atlas today. So if you don't know, if you're new here, I don't own a car, I actually drive what's called a demo. So I get a new car every four to 5,000 miles. So I put 4,000 miles in this bad boy and I'm so excited to show you how it's been working for me as a mom of two under two. Let's get started. Okay, let's start with the front end because it's one of my favorites out there. I love how wide it is. I love all the chrome elements, the white, the gray contrasting, the beautiful hood with the awesome lines on it. I think it gives it an amazing look. Kind of coming around to the side, um, overall I like the side, but there are a couple of things I don't love. For example, I don't like this horizontal stripe that kind of continues all the way down through the belt line. I feel like that stripe right there kind of like accentuates her a little bit. I mean, you don't see me putting horizontal stripes around my hips, so. I don't love that it's happening right here. Also, if you look at the chrome um, around the window, I do like it. I'd like to get, see that kind of continue all the way up in here just to kind of give it a little bit nicer element. Uh, but overall, I think it's very athletic. It's a little bit masculine, and I don't think it screams mom car, which I like. Let's continue on down this way. We start with the wraparound taillights, and then we do have a really nice chrome element that goes all the way down here. Some beautiful Atlas badging, my cute Christmas lights. You can find those on my Amazon shop and then the uh, VW logo right there, as well as square tailpipes on either side, and then my particular one comes with a tow hitch. Now this is the V6. The Alice is also available in a four-cylinder. I've driven both. Of course, I think the six-cylinder is a little bit zippier. It also tows a lot more. With the four-cylinder, you're only towing 2,500 pounds, where this one can tow up to 5,000. So that's definitely something to consider if you need to use the car to tow. Here we are on the inside of the Atlas. Um, a lot to talk about up here. First, my comfort in the driver's seat. I really like the seats in the Atlas. In all three rows, the seats are very wide, so I feel a lot more comfortable. I never get that sensation where I'm like, can't move because I'm overlapping in the seat next to me. The seats are wide, they're comfortable. A little firmer than some of the other seats I've test driven, but that's all good. Um, really comfortable, I've got some nice space. And then as far as like the design and everything, you know, it's very, straightforward, no nonsense to the point. Normally I would knock a car for being like so simple, but I think the Atlas does it really well. It doesn't feel cheap to me, it just feels well designed and functional. I love this from a mom's perspective because I don't have to worry about a bunch of different materials or things, you know, getting messy. It's very easy to clean and it's very sleek. I've got a beautiful built-in display right here that's all touchscreen with just enough buttons to get me to where I need to go. So like I can quickly select radio, quickly, quickly select navigation. If I move down here, all my climate control buttons are actual buttons, which I think is super helpful, especially for adjusting your temperature and things on the go. And then I've got a, some really nice cubby space right here. I find myself frequently using this for my keys, my phone, and I also have two USBs, a 12 volt and an aux cord. And then here's a shot of my side cubby for reference. That's my Bissell vacuum. So it fits really good like that, or I could put it that way to secure it a little bit more. So a really nice size side cubby. Now the cup holders in the Atlas are literally some of the best out there. They can fit everything. I have fit one of those giant Gatorade bottles in here. I fit like a 54 ounce bottle of water in here. Right now I just have like this little water bottle. Sorry. Hey, I'm filming a tour right now. All right. Well, it's raining here, so it's coming your direction. Well, we better hurry then. Okay. Where was I? Oh, the cup holder. The cup holders are awesome. Moving to the center council, it's super awesome. It's really big. It's very deep. Just for example, I've got jammies for both my kids, a couple of diapers, wipes, a bottle of water, a bottle, and then three toys. If you want to get a shot of that center council now. And then there's an additional USB in there. So I can fit all of them, which is awesome. A couple other things to talk about on the interior. I love the steering wheel. The steering wheel is very thick and it's completely wrapped in leather. And then I think the design is really nice. I like that I have my buttons, but we also have that additional chrome element and then some high gloss black on the inside. I think that looks great. Also, I have a digital display, which I love. It just makes me feel so much fancier and kind of like a race car driver. So I've been getting 14.4 miles per gallon in this car. Again, I have 4,073 miles on it. So I would say that's pretty true to what I'm getting. Um, you know, this is the six cylinder. You get a little bit better gas mileage with the four. So just keep that in mind. 
Okay, so I don't really use the infotainment system all that much because I find myself just using the Apple CarPlay. I think it integrates so nicely with the Volkswagen Atlas. I can listen to all my podcasts, my Pandora, my text messages, my phone, and I can even use my maps here as well, which I think is awesome. So I haven't really played with the navigation or anything because I've just strictly been using it on my Apple CarPlay. Okay, we have a mirror here. It's a little small, I'm not gonna lie, but I do like that it has an LED light. We've got a beautiful panoramic sunroof. You know, we've got all the bells and whistles. We've got a uh, lane keep assist, a backup camera, blind spot, frontal collision warning, automated cruise control, all the driver assistance features. This is the SEL trim, so it does have a lot of bells and whistles into it. Uh, but make sure you stay tuned till the end where I actually build my own Volkswagen Atlas. All right, let's talk about the car seat situation in the second row. So in my personal car, I have my son, George. He's 20 months old and he's rear facing in a Klec Foom. And then I have my 10 week old daughter, Hattie, who is rear facing in a Klec Ling pumpkin seat. So I've got George on this side, Hattie behind the Hattie behind the passenger, but I actually fit really well in between these two car seats. I wanted to set them up this way so I could ride back there with them and not have them right next to each other because I didn't want George to like throw his toys on her. So I have them separated and it's working out really well for me. I'm gonna now get, I'm gonna actually hop in and show you what I look like in the middle between my two car seats. So here's a shot of me in the second row between the Kleck Foomp and the Kleck Ling. And as you can see, I still have plenty of room. I really like how wide this bench is. There's actually three sets of lower anchors across the bench. No lower anchors in the third row, but we do have tether anchors in all five seats back here. So the car is designed pretty well for car seats. And I'm really excited to show you about how you can access the third row because that is super snazzy. Here I am in the second row. Um, as an adult, I have this seat set for myself at six feet tall. So I have a ton of room back here. Um, this is also adjustable, so I can move this forwards and backwards to allow for more room in either row, whichever I need to do. As far as the amenities are concerned, I have sunshades and some really nice side cubbies right here, very deep, a lot of great storage there. But I don't have ceiling vents. And that would almost make this car perfect. I have vents down here. I wish they were on the ceiling. And it's even crazier because when we get to the third row, they're in a better spot than they are in the second row. So no ceiling vents, bummer, but they are down here. I do have my own climate control and then I have two USBs down here as well. Um, again, the seat is very wide. I'm very comfortable. Here's obviously me in this seat, but I have plenty of room to sit here as well. So let's hop into the third row. Also, I'm sorry, my car's a little dirty. I meant to wash it, ran out of time. You guys are moms, you understand. Okay, the third row access in this car is awesome because it has what's called a car seat friendly tilt. So if you look, I pick up this leather, it does not affect the integrity of the seat and you could actually access the third row if you had a car seat installed with the lower anchors. Uh, if you had it installed with a seat belt, you would not be able to do this, but if you have a rear facing or forward facing seat like this, you can get in. Uh, something to note though is it, if it, oh my gosh, it's raining. My husband was right. Okay, if it was rear facing, you'd have to move this seat up first. Top in the third row. I'm in the third row. Let me pull this seat back. So this seat is actually pushed back as far as it can go, and I still have plenty of, not plenty of leg room, but I still have leg room. I'll get you a shot in a second of my knees. They're not touching, but they almost are. As far as my third row, to, third row amenities go, I have vents on the side, which I actually like a lot. I've got like, eh, I'd call it two and a half cup holders back here. We've got headrests that are removable. All these headrests are removable, so that's good. And then I have some lights as well. So overall, I'm pretty comfortable in the third row. I really like that it's only two seats instead of three. I feel like when they put that third seat in there, they're just, no one's winning. So I have a full size seat and I'm, I'm comfy. It'll work. Let's talk about the trunk. This is an Up Baby Vista stroller and it actually fits really well. These mid-size seven passenger cars do not have big trunks. It's just known. Um, this is one of the larger mid-size seven passenger trunks. The only trunk larger than this is the Traverse or the Enclave. This is 18 cubic feet. So I'm able to put my Vista and I still have a little bit of room to get things around it. I like this trunk a lot because I have some side compartments as well. I think that just helps for organization. So I've got a side compartment here, side compartment here. They're both illuminated, which kind of lets me see a little bit better. So. That's awesome. Let me take this stroller out and I'll give you a shot of what the trunk looks like. All right, here's how you put the seats down. You just pick, pick, that, pick up that little, you just pick up that little lever and then they go down. Beautiful size trunk. 
and then you just take these little thingies to put them up. <laughs> it's raining. <laughs> this is why the successful car reviewers live in California. These Missouri girls are struggling. Oh my god. <laughs> go. Okay, so everyone's wondering about the windshield wipers. Really good. And don't you love how the raindrops just glisten on the panoramic sunroof? I will say the heated seats are making me feel cozy while I'm sitting in straight up water. All right, everyone, let's talk about the different trim levels in the Volkswagen Atlas because I actually really like how they're broken down. So I'm on Volkswagen website. I went to the Build Your Own. And if you look at the S, it actually starts at 31.5, which is very affordable for a seven passenger car. Um, from there, you move to the SE, which has obviously a few more features and is at 34,000. After playing with all the trim levels, going all the way up to the SEL Premium, which has an MSRP of 47, I actually think the SEL with the technology gives you a lot of the safety features, none of the fuss, and still keeps it under that $40,000 price range. So if I were to build a car, I would probably go for this SE with the tech. Uh, another thing I like about it is that power seats are not included. You might be thinking, Kelly, why don't you want power seats? Well, that's because if you want to utilize that car seat friendly tilt, you may have to move that driver or passenger seat up and it's a lot easier just to pull a lever and have that seat go up than have to do it with a power seat. So that's why I'm going to stick with the SE with the tech. As you can see, it still comes with the remote start, park distance control, comes with heated front seats, uh, comes with blind spot, frontal collision warning, with braking, automated cruise control, so all the safety features. So I'm going to build that one. Um, if I go down to the engine and transmissions, you can get this in the four-cylinder and the six-cylinder. Guys, this is totally personal preference. It does affect... Um, the towing capacity quite a bit quite a bit so if you want to use this car for towing you're definitely going to want to get the six cylinder you know you can see the horsepower difference i'm going to stick with the six cylinder because it's not that much more expensive and i really like how it drives so i'm going to stick with the six okay oh hit close uh, the different color options i chose this blue i'm a blue girl i just think if the if the blue is nice i like it but um, I think the green's kind of pretty if you're looking just for something a little bit different. There's the green. See, it's very subtle. You know, I think that the grays always look really nice. I'm not a huge fan of this red in particular. So that's why I'm going to stick with just the blue. And it's no additional cost. So there, that's good. Okay, moving on to the interior. One thing I didn't love was they would not let me get these darling saddle brown seats with my blue exterior. So if I select the brown, I have to remove that, which I'm not going to do because I like the blue. Uh, you know, I looked at the beige and yeah, the dashboard and the carpet are both still that tight, tight and black, but I didn't like all the beige right here. I thought that could get dirty really easily. So I'm actually going to stick with the black. If some of those other elements were black and just the seats were beige, I may consider doing the beige, but I'm going to stick with just the simple black seats. If that Murano brown was available, I'd probably do that though. So if that's in a color that you're liking, I think that's really pretty. And then as far as extra options on the SE with the technology package, um, you know, we could add a panoramic sunroof for $1,200. You could add captain's chairs for $695. I am going to keep the bench seat because I prefer a bench. All these other accessories are so silly. Like, no, I'm not going to buy your baby mirror for $87, Volkswagen. Thanks for playing, though. I'm not going to buy your coat hanger for $65. So I thought all of these were kind of, I mean, I went through all of them and nothing was really that exciting to me. So I'm going to stick with only the panoramic sunroof. So that brings my Volkswagen Atlas to an MSRP of 40070 With That is including the six-cylinder, the panoramic sunroof, and that's kind of what I got. So I hope you guys enjoy this portion of it. Definitely go on the Build Your Own website and play with the different options. I will say, out of all the Build Your Owns I've ever used, the Volkswagen one is one of the more difficult ones to navigate, so definitely take your time getting to the different trim levels. Well, as you can see, it was raining, so I was not able to complete my outro. But just to wrap up my final thoughts on the Atlas is I think it is such a good mom car. I've been in so many different vehicles and really that one seems to work so well. I love the wide bench. I love the great car seat setup. Uh, I love the car seat friendly tilt. I think the trunk space is great. I like how it drives. Overall, it's really working awesome for me as a mom of two under two. So if it's not on your list, definitely check it out. I think it's a great car. Please like, comment, and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And if you haven't seen me on Instagram, definitely check me out at The Car Mom. I've done a ton of, ton of other tours there, and I post a lot of fun behind-the-scenes stuff. So I hope you guys are having a great day, and I'll see you next time.